Hey there. Thanks to those of you who are uh, who have joined us for the ABCs of Early Childhood Fundraising. I started us up just a tiny bit early, so we're going to wait five minutes or so, uh, maybe four or five minutes uh, for some others to join us, and then we will get started. Hey there again to those of you who are uh, joining us live this morning for the ABCs of Early Childhood Fundraising. Uh, we did hear from quite a few uh, people that we that uh, wanted to see the recording as well. So just wanted to let all of you know that we are recording this webinar and we'll be sending it out um, as well as uh, sending out the presentation after the webinar. So um, and just maybe a few other housekeeping notes. Um, we You should have a chat and a uh, Q&A button, as well as a raise hand button uh, at the top of your screen. And so as we go through the webinar, there's going to be a lot of information. Um, feel free to put any questions you have in chat and in Q&A, and we'll be monitoring that. And at the very end, we'll definitely save some time. Um, I don't want you to forget your questions, though, because like I said, there'll be a lot of hopefully good information. Um, so I think maybe we'll just uh, wait one more minute and then jump right in. Uh, While we're waiting, you guys can pop into chat and tell us where you're from if you'd like. We'd love to know cities, states, and kind of what areas of the country are represented on the call today. All right, we got a Texas, Thanks. Minnesota, Chicago, all right, right around the corner, Indiana, all right, great. Awesome. All right, I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, okay, so jumping into the ABCs of early childhood fundraising. So to start today, just to level set about our agenda, um, we'd like to talk a little bit about why fundraise. Why do you guys fundraise? Why do our constituents tell us uh, a lot of our, our preschools and early childhood centers we work with have some very specific reasons they're fundraising. So what are we raising money for? And then talking a little bit about um, why online fundraising specifically. Uh, we have a few uh, reasons that we think are really good ones uh, to uh, use an online fundraising platform. Um, and then just some stats to share with you on why online, online fundraising um, seems to be a positive choice for a lot of schools around the country. Um, and then the biggest things that we're hoping you'll get out of this 
are some ideas for fundraising events of your own. And then some tips on engaging your entire school community as you're doing those events. Um, as we talk about those two items, we're going to weave in how Lil Scholars Fund, our platform, can help you accomplish uh, fundraising events and accomplish them very quickly and very successfully. Um, so I am going to hand it off. Uh, actually, sorry, I should have introduced myself. I'm Kristen Harper. I also have Dana Savino and Ali Selflo as co-presenters with me, and we are the Little Scholars Fund team. So I'm going to hand it off to Ali to tell a little bit about us. Thanks, Kristen. My name is Ali, and I am part of the Little Scholars team. Previously, I was a director at a preschool, so I come with that background knowledge, um, and I also currently am on the parent board of my child's school. Um, a little bit about us is at Alphabet U, we have over 40 years of experience providing creative and innovative recognition, graduation, and teacher appreciation products. We gear towards the early childhood schools and organizations across the United States. Little Scholars is our new fundraising platform, like I said, developed by and for early childhood schools and centers specifically. Thanks, Allie. Awesome. So we've learned a little bit. Oh, go ahead, Dana. I was just going to hand yeah. it off to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kristen. So we recently surveyed 19,000 centers in May, and of those, 39% said that they are currently fundraising. So with that, we are going to launch a quick thumbs up, thumbs down poll here that should pop up on your screen. And if you could just give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to answer if you are currently fundraising or not see how many we get. All right. Just a couple more seconds. All right, so it looks like around 80% are currently fundraising. That's awesome to hear. So we'll close this poll and move on. So with that, for those that did thumbs up, we are going to launch another quick poll here and ask you guys what you are currently fundraising for. Just give me one moment. Launch it here and it'll pop up as a word cloud. So you can just type in what you're fundraising for. It could be field trips, teacher grants, anything that you can think of. I'll just give you guys a few seconds. All right, look at those responses. We got playground equipment, classroom supplies, playground improvement. Sounds like playground is pretty common. Just a couple more seconds here. Holiday. Awesome. So we can move on to the next slide. So back to the survey of those 39%, we asked the same question, and their responses were that they were fundraising for field trips, playground improvements, teacher grants, classroom supplies, special events or celebrations such as graduations or school anniversaries, teacher appreciation gifts, and building needs. So this can give you some ideas as well if you're looking for other fundraising ideas. So in talking about, thanks, Dana, in talking yeah. about what you're fundraising for now, um, we want to move into why online. Um, we have all gone to galas, gone to school events, school carnivals, um, been uh, in a part of the, the cookie dough sales and the wrapping paper sales door to door and things like that. But why take it online? Uh, that is really the premise of our entire platform. Um, and there's some very good reasons, but, you know, it, it's a, a medium that overall, I want to say, is growing 15 to 20 percent a year for the past five years. So that's pretty impressive. And that's uh, in the school and nonprofit area. But schools in general, I think we've all seen have are using this more and more and more. Um, as the great choice. Uh, and the reasons for that are the very first and maybe the most important to the group I'm talking to today is that it saves time. 
uh, you have a lot on your plates, and this is a way for you to simplify. So it's convenient for parents and for other donors, but it's also really convenient for you. When you use a platform like ours, online payments are already built in. Credit cards, Apple Pay, Google Pay. You don't have to take paper checks at your front desk anymore. Um, and then maybe the most important is you have immediate access to funds. You don't have to wait for a paper check in the mail or a wired deposit in the mail from the fundraising institution you're working with. So that is one of the big reasons. Um, also, so many choices uh, from fall festivals to, to sales to athons, um, any fundraiser really can be taken online. And we're gonna show you that pretty specifically in the next slides. Um, and you can also run more than fun, one fundraiser at a time. So you're not limited to, you know, doing a no fuss fundraiser, taking a bunch of checks at your front desk and then trying to run a, a do a family runathon two weekends later and, and back to the drawing board and sending out parent emails and that kind of thing. It really, you can, you can run multiple fundraisers on one platform. You can run them on one website. You can run them using one stream of communications. So it actually goes back to that simplification, but allows you so many different choices. Um, and then another big reason is just reaching a wider audience, right? The World Wide Web uh, is open to you if you are doing an online fundraiser. So no longer are you close to just the 20 mile radius of your school or center, but you can uh, put your fundraiser on social media. You can put you can put a link to the website, a link to donating, a link to specific raffle items even, um, and have that shared throughout your, not just your school community in your specific state or specific town, but throughout the country. Uh, and another thing we saw that was big during the pandemic that has really continued pretty successfully are hosting live virtual events. So, um, you know, we actually just a couple weeks ago, our school did a 5K that my sister living in Africa and her family of eight all participated in and then went to the live uh, award ceremony. So you can uh, in, uh, encourage participation and really broaden your network with an online fundraiser. And then like we talked about before, so many options. So this is just a list of the options that our platform uh, includes. And I'm gonna go through these one by one, uh, some of them quicker than others. Some of them don't need a bunch of explanation, but I'd like to show you some examples and give you some very uh, preschool and early childhood specific examples of where you can use some of these fundraising options. So events is where we're starting out here. And events are something that you guys have probably experienced online before. Uh, but our platform does allow you to, to create an event. This is probably our quickest um, template to set up. And it, it truly can be set up. And you can start selling tickets in minutes. Uh, you get a customized web page branded for your school and your event. Um, it allows you to keep track of registrations very easily. Uh, you can also, with those registrations, you just export a list um, and you can use that list for QR code check-in if, you, if you'd like. That's an option. It's an option you don't have to take advantage of. But if you do that QR code check-in, it's all from the platform. So you can just open the platform on your phone and check people in. Uh, you can also create special ticket levels and packages. And what I'm going to do on every uh, every uh, fundraising option that I tell you about is tell you a little bit about it, and then I'd like to show it to you. So this is a website that was set up for a fall carnival. And so you can see here that we'll talk more about this, that, that multiple ways to donate. But the, the main uh, fu function of this site is to sell tickets to our fall car carnival. So you just click in to buy tickets. And you can see here that they did different levels. They did an early bird carnival entry, individual entry, family entry, and then the, the early bird date has passed. So that's already closed out for me. But I can purchase a individual entry really easily. I can up the amount that I purchase. I check out really easily right there. And then I can add other things to my cart if I want to. And we'll get into the raffle and the general donations a little later, but all right at my fingertips and very easy also to put frequently asked questions about the event, to add updates. Here's our rain date or location. I uh, just got word that we're able to add, you know, Clown Bob to the event and he's going to be there with his, his juggling and tricks. You know, you can put all these events in there. And then when you create an update, people who have already bought tickets will get an immediate alert. So no need for multiple emails and for you to be managing all of that.
Raffles and sweepstakes are another type, another option for fundraising within the platform. And these are actually restricted in certain states. Um, I believe it's raffles that are allowed in some states more than others. Sweepstakes are restricted depending on your 501c3 status. Um, but the platform takes care of all of that for you in Little Scholars Fund. Uh, you just enter your state when you first sign up and it'll tell you what is, and you enter your stat, your tax exemption status, and it tells you what is and isn't available as, as far as options go. Uh, if you can do raffles or sweepstakes, though, we have lots of options there. So you can do prizes, baskets, a 50-50 raffle is uh, a, a pretty popular option we know. Um, it auto generates thank you notes and emails. It actually um, automatically chooses winners in raffle situations. Let me show you an example of that. And actually there is an example here within our event of a prize-based raffle. So here the school set up different prizes park tickets, family portraits, experiences, vacations. You just click into this and buy entries for your prize. And again, it just adds them to my cart if I do that, along with my tickets that I bought previously. And then here's a quick example of a 50-50 cash prize. And this is adding this on to a gala dinner. So an easy way for people to purchase to purchase entries before they come to the gala, again, as they're purchasing their ticket potentially. But what you can do here is you buy the, the entries, as many as you want, and check out. And then the system itself will choose the winner, send an email, send an email to everyone else to let them know the winner has been chosen. And you can customize that email completely. As I said before, you can completely customize this entire website. Um, but the fun thing is that your um, those who are entering and those who are buying tickets for your events as well can share the experience online. They can text the link. You, this can all be done on mobile. It's completely mobile friendly as well. And then there's a I'll show a little later. There's a fun uh, section here for people who have donated. If they don't want to remain anonymous, they can talk about the number of entries they purchase. They can leave fun notes for their friends who are other parents at the school and that kind of thing. So an auction is another option for fundraising and auctions. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, really neat uh, preschool ideas for auctions. Art is one of, uh, auctioning off kids art is one of the most popular. Uh, the gift basket auction is auctions. Uh, Queen of Carpool, we've probably all seen that be auctioned off and wish we were the ones who would win it. Or maybe that's just me. Um, uh, but the, uh, an easy way to get this started is to involve local businesses by asking them to donate items. They are very used to schools coming to them. This is something that uh, what what has been interesting is that we've seen a lot of elementary schools, middle and high schools, uh, really utilize this. And the, the preschools are not. And the businesses are used to being asked. They're ready to give, whether it's a you know, a gift card to a restaurant, a local restaurant in town or a boutique, a gift card to a boutique or a, you know, car wash coupon, that kind of thing. There's probably a lot of businesses around your school or center who would be happy to be asked and be happy to be then advertised in your auction to your parents. Um, within our platform, you can choose your style of bidding. So you can either do a um, range bid like you see here or a uh, individual uh, bid, and I'll show you an example of that in a second, and blasting out links to the auction page, just like the raffle and the um, the sweepstakes. Uh, so here is one auction. Chrome, this is like my Chrome this morning. You know what, while that's loading, I'm gonna pull this one up. So the kids art auction that I was talking about that we all love. Um, so here is an example of one and we did not put the children's names on this one, but you can. Um, it's very easy. You can do a buy it now price. You set all of this yourself behind the scenes uh, and very easy to buy it now or place a bid. And this is the flat rate bid I was talking about. So the two types of bid styles, if you want to allow parents to do a range and then it'll automatically bid up to the top of that range, you can do that as well. Um, add it to the cart. And this is a nice addition to an event as well. If you do a uh, some type of holiday event and the kids have done art around that or, uh, you know, muffins for moms or donuts for dads, this is kind of a fun um, thing to add on to an event like that. Again, you can put frequently asked questions in there um, and any updates you might have as well. And those are options. Those actually don't have to appear on your site. If you choose not to have those, that, that's completely customizable as well. 
a very popular online um, fundraiser in the past. Uh, probably, I, I feel like I maybe saw this start maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, is an athon. So these are most often you'll see these as runathons, but there's also we have seen so many creative ideas from schools using our platform. Um, Trikathons, readathons, you know, there's there's tons of great ways to use this type of fundraiser. And what it is, for those of you who may not know, is a student focused event where the students complete certain activities and the site is uh, personalizable. Uh, that's a word, um, so that you can uh, you can set up your event and uh, decide what the pledges will go towards. And I'm going to show you a few examples of that. And you can also go up a level with the athon. You don't have to. You can make it as simple as you'd like, but you can add a level of complexity and allow the children to set up their own fundraising pages, allow the parents to set up fundraising pages for the kids, um, maybe by class, maybe by child, by student, but maybe by class, maybe by age group maybe by sex, boys versus girls on the trikes, you know. Um, and so that does inspire even more engagement. And our platform has some leaderboards that you can activate or choose not to activate. And again, auto-generated thank you notes, emails to donors. Show you an example of that. And I'm actually going to show you two of these. This is the simple athon that I was talking about, the trikeathon. So super fun here. Um, what you would do for a trikeathon is you would pledge. So we all, we do have the children listed here, just their first names and last initial, and you would pledge per lap. So this is what's customizable. And let's say I want to do a dollar per lap, but you know Georgia's goal is six laps. Georgia sets that herself uh, with her parents, and uh, or with her teacher. A teacher can set this up for their classroom real easily as well. Um, and then you know Georgia might get crazy and she might do twenty laps, and I really only want to donate ten dollars, so I can put that in there. And then again, just goes to the cart and uh, easy easy to check out. And what happens with an athon is you actually don't get. Uh, Get the the checkout is not completed and the billing is not done until the event itself is completed. And again, the system does all of that for you. And here are just some of those student pages. Now we didn't activate any rankings here. We didn't activate by classroom or the, the competition that I was talking about. So I wanna show you a quick demo that does include that. So this is a readathon for a school. And again, I actually hear a lot more information. The goal of the school is to read 250,000 minutes over the course of two weeks. Pretty aggressive goal. Um, and students are going to be tracking their reading in 10 minute sessions. So this talks about how uh, for a donor, a parent, a grandparent, how you uh, can donate. And so, and it also, by the way, this is an active uh, example. So it shows how much we've raised toward our goal, how much is left to go. So if I want to pledge, I'm going to go into Alex T. We've also got the classrooms listed here. I'm going to donate to him and then I'm donating per reading session. So, and again, I can do a maximum amount, but, and there's some pre-selected amounts. You even get to customize these as well. You can use our templated version if you'd rather, but there is the opportunity to customize everything. Uh, and then the neat thing is here that you also can see by class and donate by class if you'd like to just do a flat rate amount for the class. And you can sign up as a student or have the parents sign up for their students. Um, and when you do that, then you get added to this leaderboard. And so you get to see who has the highest amount raised. And like I said, this is by student, but you can also do it by classroom. You can do it by age group, um, any, any delineation you, you would like for your school or center. So that's an athon. Um, and online sale is another really popular one for preschool and early childhood centers. Um, so you've you've all probably done uh, or given to a classroom wish list. I'm going to show you an example of that, but that is what uh, that is part of what we classify as a sale, an online sale. Um, and we have templates built for that to easily help you set one up. Um, but then you may also be doing product sales for your school or be looking into product sales for the school. So I mentioned the cookie sales and the wrapping paper sales and, and talked about how online uh, fundraising is better. But what you can do is take what you're already doing and put it online. 
So you can still simplify your life and and sell popcorn and sell, you know, wreaths, uh, Christmas wreaths for the corner Christmas tree farm guy. You can do it all um, on our platform. So uh, what you would do is you would set up a sale and and it would keep track of the and you can set up inventory if you have certain uh, levels of inventory uh, that that you um, cannot go over. Uh, and you can easily get a, a dashboard view of how many items are sold and how much money has raised. And you can get an exported list that then you would give back to your vendor. You can use all of your current vendors, like I said, and you would give that list back to the vendor so they would know exactly what had been ordered, what quantities, what sizes, that kind of thing. Um, and here you can add a peer to peer function with to this and have students in classes record their, their own sales show you a couple quick examples here of that. So this is a holiday resale, uh, easy to buy items. Takes you down here. If you click that buy items, it takes you right down here. You just pick out whatever. And, and so you as a school have uploaded pictures of the items. Now, typically when you're working with an outside vendor though, they can provide you with those images really easily. You've uploaded the picture, you've chosen the price, and then you've chosen what you want to put here. If you want to put any details in, you don't have to. Um, and then parents can very easily purchase and check out. This one is divided. Oh, this one actually is not divided by student. This one is divided by student. So here's a popcorn sale. Now in this one, what we chose to do, we put a little bit more information about the vendor and then actually did a, a, a spot, had the vendor be a sponsor here. And so put a bunch more information there. Uh, and then again, details. Oops. Let me do details. Um, you can put as many details as you want in here. You can put frequently asked questions and updates. The last site did not have those. And then you can uh, sort it by student if you want to do that. Um, again, our student center here, we've got some. Yeah, so this is how uh, the students would register if they wanted to have their own page. Um, a classroom wish list is set up similar to a sale in our platform, but what you're gonna do here is uh, Enter the amount that are available and the amount that are taken. So there, if you you know need ten bottles of Clorox, then you'll set up ten bottles of Clorox, and uh, as parents uh, purchase them, that list will go down, or that number will go down. And at the end, you'll get an inventory list, like I said. So you'll export that, and then what you'll have is the cash to buy those things already in your account. So you don't actually get the supplies; you get the money to go and buy the supplies or to parcel out to your different teachers. If you wanted to do one school-wide wish list, you also could divide this by classroom really easily and do a few different classes classroom or age group wish lists. I'll talk about real briefly because you probably noticed that you've seen it in every single fundraiser I've brought up. So making a general donation, adding this as, a, as an element to each fundraiser is easy to do and it's often what parents sometimes prefer or relatives and the wider school community that we'll talk about in a second here it's often what they prefer is just to give a flat donation the no fuss fundraiser has grown in popularity so that's almost what this is here it's just adding an, a level of flat donation to everything that you um, offer and um, what's neat is recognizing those who donate oh i actually didn't show that and i wanted to uh, so that is here So you'll see here that we can see that Lydia and Anton and Sandy donated and wrote a small note to their their uh, son or their grandson or their neighbor and and you don't have to you can come in as anonymous you can actually come in and not note your donation at all here it's completely up to the the donor when they uh, make a donation but that's kind of a fun way to encourage support and there have been studies that have shown when you have this type of uh, donation notation on a fundraiser that it does accelerate the amount that you can raise so so yeah and then the other thing that the platform lets you do is put in perks for the amount that you donate if you and you can do a just a crowdfunding specific fundraiser if you'd like where you're just literally doing a no fuss fundraiser that's very easy to do um but on any fundraiser, if you have a make a general donation button, you can offer perks. So for instance, donate $50, get a t-shirt, $100, you get a soccer ball, uh, $500, you win a Disney gift card. Um, so 
those are just easy things to add within the platform. Um, and so to wrap up all of those options, what are I, I think most exciting and, and kind of fun thing about our platform is how easy it is to have one event with multiple fundraisers. So you host a back to school night, you sell tickets to raise funds, you've got a raffle um, and that people can buy entries from either before the event or even at the event on their phone. And then people can always make a general donation. And this is uh, one good way to engage your community is to really have all of those different options for different levels of, of the community, right? Like as a parent, I'm going to support my child at a pretty high level, grandparent, grandparent probably the same, and uncle, cousin, you know, great aunt and uncle, that maybe a little lower, and then neighbors and, and, and even local businesses, you know, they want to sponsor the kids at your school too. So the sponsorships I was talking about, and I showed you earlier, you actually can set those up online. So yes, you are having to publish the link, whether you send it out through an email, whether you take it around in a letter, um, but then the, the local business, then your uh, involvement really ends there. The local business can go online themselves and purchase a sponsorship from your fundraising site. And then you can recognize them with something like this at the bottom of the fundraiser page that all of the parents are going to. Um, sharing social, sharing on social media, encouraging parents to share or text the link. Like I said earlier, that's the whole, you know, let's get the, let's get the world involved in the World Wide Web here. Um, and then adding the peer-to-peer -peer component to the fundraiser is something that that is very um, a great way to engage the community. Very fun. Um, often allows you to uh, go beyond. Actually, that 5K I was talking about is at a school that my kids don't go to. It's a school in our neighborhood that we just wanted to participate because some of our friends are there. So really getting um, going beyond that small radius of your school and even the smaller radius of just your parents and your students. Um, so adding the peer-to-peer -peer component, I said we you can do that simply or you can do it with a little bit more complexity by having contests on raising the most and encouraging through prizes and incentives. These are some of the personalized fundraiser websites that I showed you earlier. So by classroom, by child, um, again, some of the um, fun ways that people can note and uh, show that they've made a donation. And then just overall, I think I talked um, as we went through about the benefits of Little Scholars Fund, but one of the biggest benefits is the user friendliness of our platform. So you truly can set up a fundraiser in minutes and I'm gonna show you our, our templates are long list of templates. Um, you can also fully customize the branding on the website, or you can use our template branding. I mean, that Trikathon photo is a stock photo. If you want to use that stock photo, you feel free. Um, if it, it really, it is what fundraising is supposed to be engaging, not just for your community, but also for your staff and for you. So how can we bring the fun back into fundraising? Not to be too cheesy, but, um, we have lots of options. We have the simple setup I was discussing. And then the thing I'm saving for last that probably is the, the biggest is that it is totally free. So some of these Athon fundraisers specifically, uh, there are a lot of companies exist that do just one or just one or two of these options. And um, some of them take quite a big chunk of the money that you raise. And that is not what we're about. Um, like Ali said in the beginning, we were developed by and for early childhood. So we really want you to be able to keep the money that you're raising. Uh, we know how badly that you'll need it for some of the things that you were talking about on those first slides. Um, so what does this mean? I don't wanna just throw this out there and then leave you. So every fundraiser you do, you have the opportunity to pick one of two options um, and you can change it for each fundraiser, it can be different. Um, so free pricing is where a donor leaves a tip to fund the cost. And we've pr you've probably all seen both of these options before. Um, this is the specific uh, verbiage that a donor gets, a parent, a grandparent, a neighbor, when they uh, buy a ticket, if you're going to choose this for an event, or when they make a general donation, if you choose this option. So it does specifically say that the tip proceeds go to the platform provider to fund the cost. So that's why it's completely free to you. The tip is added, it's optional, and it's added at checkout. So it is not a part of what of the money you're raising at all. Percent pricing is another option. And when you do percent pricing, we add 7.5%. And, and there are some options within this. You can add it automatically 
to the cost of whatever you're buying. Often you'll see this in events. Um, uh, applications like GoFan, they automatically add an eight and a half, nine percent um, to every ticket you buy. Uh, Ticketmaster, we all know how much they add, right? So ticketing, that's often done, the percent price. You can uh, choose to have it added on top of what is purchased, or you can choose to have it taken from whatever they purchase. So if they don't, or, or donate. So if they donate $20 and you choose to have the percent price taken off of the $20, then that would come off of the amount you raise. But that is completely up to you. And honestly, our, our most popular option is that free pricing. Um, it's, uh, something that's, that's done quite a bit now. So I think parents and donors are used to it. And, um, we find that it, it, the nice thing about it is it really doesn't affect your fundraising at all. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about is I keep saying, get started fast, get started fast. So I promise that is not just me talking. You really can get started fast with Little Scholars Fund. These uh, templates that we've set up, the, you would just go to go.littlescholarsfund.com, and I do have a link at the end of this presentation, and actually we'll drop one into chat for you as well. Um, and then once you sign up, you start, you create your first fundraising experience, and you can start with a, bl a blank fundraiser, but the other thing you can do is browse templates, and you can see here that we have got a lot of them for you. So, uh, and you can go into a template and then you can change it into whatever you'd like. So go into a popcorn sale template and change it to cookie dough, change it to wrapping paper, whatever you need to do, but at least you've got a starting point that'll get you, you know, instead of starting at point A, we're starting you at point M or N. Um, and then the other thing I did want to emphasize before I take any questions is that uh, we are not just um, chat bots. We are a company of real people who are here to, to um, help you all along the way when you get if you have an issue and you're in our platform there is a chat button and when you hit that button you will get a person um and often you may get one of us so it it really it it's a it's something that we want to help you succeed at and help uh, make sure it's as quick and easy as what i'm telling you today so do we have any questions it doesn't look like we do dana i don't know are you seeing any I am not seeing any any. We did have one during asking about pricing, but we covered that. Other than that, not seeing any questions. So if anyone does have any questions, feel free to pop it in the chat and we can answer them. All right. Well, I'm actually going to I'll, mm -hmm. I'll move right on. And, and if there's any um, questions after the fact, when you get the recording or when you um, I know we went over on time a little bit when you um, when you get the recording in the presentation or when you enter the platform, please feel free to email us. Um, just a, a quick glance at uh, some of the creative fundraising inspiration that we have received from uh, and, and seen from our early childhood uh, friends. So again, you'll get this uh, in email, so I won't spend too much time on it, but a lot of fun ideas, right? Breakfast with Santa tickets, Thanksgiving pie sales, a dance-a-thon. Um, and then the last thing that I want to make sure I touch on before anybody leaves is get in there and start to plan your fundraisers now for the 2024-2025 uh, academic year. We are matching 5% of everything you raise between now and the end of the year and giving you a merchandise credit to Alphabet U. So um, please get in there and, and play around and let us know if we can help you. And we hope that you learned something and got some great ideas today. Thanks so much for joining us.